Hey, it's Chuck. And I don't think he's going to throw the ball as much as he thinks he's going to throw the ball now that Chip Kelly's on board. And I'm happy about that. More quarterback. Um, the truth is, Ryan Day has made a change philosophically. But it's none of those. You all know who wins. LSU is the drunkest fan base in the country. Start. Hey, welcome to the Chuck on Bucks post game show as the Buckeyes defeat the Iowa Hawkeyes by a final of 35 to 7. I had 35 to 10 in my prediction. I think a lot of you guys were somewhere pretty similar. So that sounds great. Um, I had some comments going on here, and all of a sudden, after that intro, everything disappeared. Are you guys with me? Do we got, are we linked up? Is everything good? We're, ah, uh, I'm muted. You got to be kidding me. There's no way. Did this thing happen again? Are you messing with me? Can you hear me, Emily? Okay, we're here. What's up, guys? Man, look, wow. If you wanted to see a performance uh, that makes you feel really confident heading into the big week next week, wow. This was something. Um, Bucks obviously in control the entire sec. Well, Look, let's just kind of go through what happened. So the line first off started Bucks as 23 and a half point favorites. It had moved to 17 by game time. And all those betters pushing that down, uh, they lost big because the Buckeyes were absolutely dominant today. And I said I'd be happy with a win by any amount because of the way Iowa plays. They just muck things up. Um, they muck things up and, you know, they just have a way of making uh, making the game ugly. And if they get a couple turnovers, look out. That happened. But we'll get to that. The Bucks come out in their gray uniforms. I didn't like the way they looked in the sun. The last time we saw the gray unis was against Michigan State. It was a night game. They looked a little different to me in the sun. And today is when I kind of saw what people were talking about, having a hard time picking up the numbers. Um, didn't really like the look today. Though I do like the, like the jerseys as I'm wearing, a, wearing an Eddie Gray right now. But um, we're getting to the point in the season where we're seeing a good chunk of the helmet covered in the Buckeye leaves, which I love. So the first quarter, Iowa's first possession, they get one first down. Buckeye defense looks great. Buckeye's first possession, drive down the field, methodically, Will's six for six for 46 yards, easy touchdown, took the easy stuff. Offensive line looked fantastic against that beast interior we talked about all week. Uh, they were dominant. Even Tegra and Fryer, wide open holes. Chip had the had Iowa off balance, and the drive ends with the touchdown to a Mecca. Bucks didn't get the ball back for their second possession until 12 minutes left in the second quarter. And normally, I would say that's what Iowa does, man. They they run the clock, blah blah. But it's actually the Buckeyes who took that ridiculously long. hell i just lost my screen you guys got me I'm sorry lost my screen my screen just went out for a second um all right cool so we saw uh caleb johnson slip and we saw Will Howard slip early. The Marshall game was really hot, and we were told that because of that heat that they were uh, they were slipping on the rubber. Definitely not hot today, but I did see a couple early slips. Did not see it later on in the game. Um, Bucks third possession, we got the J.J. fumble, which was really unfortunate. That was a great run after that catch. You know, chalk it up to – that happens once in a while. Um, Iowa's ensuing possession. Bucks shut them down quick, three and out, and then – Bucks get it back again. We see a shot to JJ. Overthrown a little bit. JJ had inside leverage, and he could have led him a little bit more, but I loved seeing him take that shot early. Great job pulling the trigger. You got JJ one-on-one. -on -one, take the shot and get that on film. Make everybody worry about it, and he did. So I was happy that he let it fly. Uh, then Will followed that up with an errant throw to Innis, who was well covered. Gives the ball back to the Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes' fifth possession. Great play by Cody causes a third and 12, and then Sonny makes a big-time play on third down 
on a screen pass to Caleb Johnson. Sonny ran through a wide receiver block, got there fast. It looked instinctive, athletic, and great form tackle. Everybody went wild. So pumped for Sonny, man. This is what we needed to see. Sonny was great today, guys. It was the best he's played as a linebacker. Didn't stuff the stat sheet, just four tackles, but he was sound. He was everywhere he needed to be. He got off blocks better, and he finally looked athletic like we know him to be. Like everything was just on point, and he was fired up. Uh, it looked like a different player out there. Like from the last two games to today, totally different player. So amazing to see that from Sonny as we head into the toughest games of the season, particularly next week because. I'm sorry, guys. I guess uh, it might be one of those days for me. provider and that one doesn't seem to have the upload speeds but we'll keep it rolling if it shuts out again i'm gonna bounce and i'll just have to record it but uh anyway uh ty leak's impact really felt today jt and jack were very good in the run game we saw a few completions that could have been defended better early man uh, what's his name mcnamara was uh 11 for 16 for 72 yards in the first half and Caleb Johnson had 19 yards in the first half on eight carries. And then him and Sonny kind of got into it in a little uh, jibber jabber. Now, earlier on in the game, um, or earlier on in the week, when I showed that clip of Caleb Johnson saying that he wouldn't have gone to Ohio State, 
he mentioned he said he talks to a couple of Ohio State players. One of the players he mentioned was Sonny. So they definitely know each other. Um, so I don't know what kind of history they had uh, together, but they were John back and forth, which I absolutely love seeing Sonny get that that fire in him. And I think it spurred him on, man. He just was so great today. So great. And uh, that's exactly what we need to see, man. So promising. Um, absolutely loved it. So we take a seven to nothing lead to halftime. And the Buckeyes had 199 total yards at the half. Iowa had just 92 total yards, just 20 rushing. Um, so really dominant, but you were just up seven to nothing. In the second half, Bucks come out. Uh, big shot to JJ, little underthrown, but. You know, he caught it. And I think all we can expect on these deep balls with Will is uh, they're not going to look the prettiest, but with JJ there, they're going to get done somehow. And he got it done, made the catch. And then you have that ridiculous one handed catch by JJ. He does it again, absolutely filthy. And this time, just totally little brother in the dude with his left arm while he catches it with the right for a touchdown. It's just insane, man. The kid's insane. Um, and he's all ours for uh, just a couple of more years. It's just amazing. It's not even fair. Uh, first play of the ensuing possession, Jack causes a fumble. Cody recovers the fumble. Sawyer with two sacks and a forced fumble. A great game for Jack. And you come back with a couple runs from Trey, who's running very physical. Noticeably more physical with Carlos Lachlan as his coach than he was with Tony Alford. And that's Locke's philosophy. Bring the pain, make it physical, and that's what he does. And then Will kept it on the uh, speed option for himself. Shows off his speed gets to the edge, and just like that in the second half, it's 21 to the nothing in a totally different ball game from there on. And that's your margin of error against these Buckeyes. You turn the ball over, and boom, just like that, 21 nothing with uh, with 8.40 left in the second half, or in the second or in the third quarter. Um, so just after halftime, they, uh, they explode. Uh, we saw Luke Lachey with a couple of nice catches. I felt good for uh, Jim and Luke Lachey on that. But uh, following one of those catches, the very next play, Cody missed a tackle. Caleb got loose for a 28-yard gain. And then we see Cody tip the ball. IGB gets the pick. And a great return from IGB, who looked really, really fast. And Cody tipping that ball, we got uh, a Ty Hamilton turnover later. Ty caused a turnover later. So all three turnovers were caused. We had Jack caused one, Ty caused one. And then Cody caused one with that tip. And again, this was something we were just, we needed to see more of from last year. Bucks come in last week against Michigan State and forced two of those turnovers. All three turnovers today, there were no gimmies. There were no picks just thrown to somebody or, or somebody just loosely fumbling. They were all caused by the Buckeyes. They worked on it. They're getting it done. It's excellent. Um, so that, that's a great development for sure. A lot of people say, you know, you can't be a good defense without forcing turnovers. Well, they were a great defense last year. They're even better this year by forcing those turnovers. Uh, not a lot to complain about, man. Bucks get to uh, 35 to nothing, put in the second string defense, give up the touchdown, lose the shutout, but who cares? 35-7, our final score. Ameka with nine receptions. Uh, he had 11 total targets, just 71 yards, but three touchdowns. And that second half was an absolute clinic. Just uh, really just all you needed was the third quarter. It was beautiful. Um, I don't know, guys. I had a list of questions and I'm going to go through them. But like everything is, is a huge pass. So limit explosive run plays on Friday. That's what I wanted to see. We definitely saw that. I think we saw maybe one explosive play, maybe two, if you can count that second string quarterbacks long run. But I don't know if I counted or not. Uh, yards after contact from Caleb Johnson. Yeah, not many. Would we see continued offensive line dominance? We definitely saw continued offensive line dominance. The offensive line was almost perfect. Like it, it was so good. I couldn't even believe it because I thought that this interior for Iowa was going to give him a little bit of trouble. Uh, maybe two plays, two plays, the one fourth down when Will tried to run it. Donovan got, got driven back and maybe a couple plays after that. We saw that kid who was lined up over Donovan, a pretty damn good ball player, gave him a couple of fits. But the offensive line as a whole, just amazing. Every week we ask for a fast start. Today we got it. You can't complain about a uh, a 12-play drive that, that eats up a bunch of clock 
and you go straight down the field and score. And the defense with the, they gave up one first down on their per, first possession before they got the ball back. Um, does the rushing attack keep up the torrid pace? As far as yards, I don't know. Let's see what they did yards wise. Quinshawn, 13 for 78. Trey, 11 for 61. Will, 10 for 28. So not a ton of yards, but yeah, they were busting off nice chunk plays at a time. Uh, the rushing attack looked really, really sharp. Those dudes look so good. And when you look at Caleb Johnson, who's a really good running back, and compare it to watching Quinn and Trey, you can just see the difference in the juice that those guys got. Um, JJ's targets over six. Would we see JJ's targets over six? We saw five targets to JJ. Turns out that's all we needed. With four receptions, he had 89 yards, along a 53, and uh, in his touchdown. And then B.I. I wanted to see B.I. get involved. B.I. got involved. And that was awesome to see B.I. get uh, get a couple of catches. Uh, he had that one, was on a, was a third and 12. He, he got hit with that uh, that slant. And then he had the one-hander early on. Little one hand, little one-handy job by B.I., which was also uh, very cool to see. And we didn't hear a thing from Gary or uh, not Vern. <laughs> it's not Vern anymore. Nestler. Um, they didn't say anything about Carnell. And Carnell clearly was out at the start of the game. He did not have his helmet. So Carnell didn't play. Uh, but they didn't say one thing about it on the uh, – boy, they're so bad, guys. How many times did we hear Danielson talking about the Buckeyes loving to play nickel when they're literally lined up in the 4-3, like at the moment? I don't think he knows that Sonny Styles switched to linebacker. I think that's what was going on there because he kept saying it over and over again. Um, so can't wait to hear what you guys got to say. But, I, I mean, 1,000-yard view – I don't think you could have asked for a better game before the Oregon game. And this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted to focus all week next week on Oregon and not be stuck talking about some troubling things that we saw from today. And, you know, th there's not a thing I can pick out where I'm saying, okay, this looks like it's, it's going to be an issue, or this might be an issue. Like everything looked exactly like you would have wanted. Um, I'm feeling great about the game next week. I watched the Ducks the other night. They look pretty good, too. They're probably playing their best football right now. And uh, th this is going to be one heck of a game. But uh, Rod says, uh, Danielson gets worse and worse. And he really does, man. It's just, I, I used to be kind of a fan of his years ago. He always would give some sharp analysis or come at something from a way that I wasn't seeing it. And he would make me think. No more, man. He's not even getting basic things right, which is uh, which is a shame. And they leave these guys on, the guys that turn into legends, they leave them on the air way too long. You know what I mean? Um, Damo said, uh, Genty's already got a 63-yarder. This guy's amazing. Absolutely amazing. b Seif says, if Howard could throw the deep ball, it would be perfect. It would. Uh, obviously not his strength, but I think it's important that every game they keep putting a couple of them out there. Uh, if you want to, if you want to go one-on-one -on, -one on JJ, he's got to show them that there's going to be a chance you're going to pay big for it. So I'm happy he keeps chucking it out there. Richie says Vern was the man. Uncle Vern was absolutely that dude. Brandingo said he was surprised to see Bryson taking snaps over BI. How many? Um, I don't have the snap count yet. I did see him out there a little bit. Did he get a target? He got one target for that one reception for uh, eight yards, and then he, and then he did the first down jobby, but but he was uh, a yard short of the first down. That's always embarrassing. Remember when? Uh, oh, what was that? Was Michigan State last year when Jelani did that? Matter of fact, that was the gray uniform game last year when Jelani did that. Caught the ball, mark first down, about three yards short. Pillow says, Sonny Styles plays so much better in a three-linebacker set. It allows him to play more freely. He absolutely plays better. And uh, Terry says, Sonny played great. Yes. Well, he said killed it. I said played great. He did. He was fantastic. That was what we've been waiting to see out of Sonny. That was just an awesome performance and honestly gives me a ton of hope moving forward 
that uh, this is not going to be some long, drawn-out process. He's going to get hot, and he's absolutely – Oh, I thought you were about to say he has 195 yards already, Steve. He took the over on Genty over 195. Jason thinks the defense looked really good. I mean, they were fantastic. I wish I I wish I would have taken a snapshot when the Bucks put their second string defense in. Iowa ends up with a total of 225 yards, 110 passing 115 rushing but really it was so much better than that um when the bucks took out the uh the starting defense which holding an opponent to 225 is yeah you're, you're gonna kill them but uh it was even more impressive than that they were fantastic they shut their stud back down you know that's the number two running back in the country and they shut him down uh milro sack fumble vandy ball it is 33 to 28 vanderbilt with eight minutes left, and they do have the ball across the 50-yard line as uh, Vanderbilt looking to try to upset Alabama. Vanderbilt's been tough this year. They took Missouri to overtime. Um, that same Missouri team that people were telling us could win the Big Ten, uh, that Missouri team got mollywopped at Texas A&M today, and Texas A&M looks like they've improved quite a bit from game one. So maybe, maybe Elko really is that dude for them. So congrats to him. The Duck Knight says the Oregon offensive line finally lived up to preseason expectations, and it was against a legit front seven. I thought the same thing. I thought that Oregon offensive line looked really, really stout last night. Really stout. GT says, I think getting Carnell Tate back for the Oregon game will be crucial. Ennis played tough, but he's not quick like Tate. Tate's phenomenal on crossing, crossing routes and phenomenal as a weapon over the middle, uh, and a great blocker, too. Yeah, we got it. We got it right in front of uh right in front of this uh light here in front of my face. It's kind of hard to see with the light shining, but I can get the basic uh the basic gist of what's going on, man. I can't believe it. I don't know if it's so much a a, a case of Bama getting caught sleeping or underestimating them. I just think this Vandy this Vandy team is pretty good. Styles and Simon, that's the game we were looking for. Absolutely. They both played really good. They both played really good. I love it when my family, who knows I'm on this, like text me. <laughs> FSU Clemson started. I, I thought about this earlier this week, Rod. I was doing my preview, and I looked back at it, and I was like, my gosh. I didn't even put Florida State and Clemson on this thing. Florida State and Clemson was when I did the top 25 games for me that I was looking forward to for the year. Um, I think it was number like 10 to 12 of the most important games of the year. Just because somebody's going to win the ACC and go to the playoffs. So it was on there because of that. And it usually always is a fun game. But uh, yeah, totally. It means absolutely nothing. GT says the key to beating Oregon is the offensive line. If Ohio State plays like they did on offensive line today and don't make boneheaded mistakes, they'll beat Oregon by multiple touchdowns. It's definitely one of the big keys. That's for sure. GT doesn't think Gabriel is a quarterback who plays well from behind against elite teams. He threw a couple of boneheaded picks last night. That's for sure. Steve wants the Buckeyes to move to number one. If we uh, look at the dogs and the bammers today, I mean, you know, they've been very fluid with the rankings. We got so almost forgotten about the last couple of weeks on the national scene. I think today ought to remind everybody. Um, honestly, I talked to a lot of people this week who were – really down on the Buckeyes and not feeling like they matched up well with Georgia and Alabama, which I couldn't disagree with more. And, you know, just think if you're a fan of one of one of them today, like how you're feeling, what you're thinking, like they're all thinking the same thing as when you nitpick your team, because none of these teams are perfect. Chris agrees that Sonny and the linebackers played so good today. It was uh, the highlight, the highlight of the game for me. 
were those linebackers. And Sonny is uh, Sonny's going to be my Juckeye of the day. Definitely. He is the dude today. Emeka also with a great performance today. Emeka's so steady, man. Stos, he's just so steady. What's up, Billy McBee? How we doing, buddy? Emily says, are we worried about Howard and these interceptions? Um, I, I, I think we're always going to have a game where he's going to throw a couple ill-advised balls. It's just a matter of the timing. I thought it was uh, it was really boneheaded to take that chance, um, the one right before the half. With 107 backed up, you know, you, you're going to err on the side of, we want to get to halftime with the lead. Turning that over was a, was a bad move. And uh, it just seems like he has one of these brain farts every now and again. But, you know, all in all, a really, really good game from Will. What's up, E? Great win for the Buckeyes indeed, buddy. Yeah, Woody's gets it here. Watch the narrative change to Iowa being a bad team and OSU still hasn't played anyone. And we're used to this, right? They move the goalposts on us playing in the Big Ten all the time. What's up, Dave? Bama going down. Um, looking like a real possibility, man. Looking like a real possibility. How embarrassing would that be? You know, their uh, their quarterback, Vanderbilt's quarterback, Diego Diego Parva. Um, they asked him earlier this week if you know they, they were going to beat Bama, and uh, he says, you know, only God knows. And I saw some other shows were playing that and and kind of laughing at him. Oh, we think uh, Las Vegas knows too. Like if Vandy actually beats them, like if you play in the SEC and you lose to Vandy, you get clowned so hard. It's it's like us losing to Northwestern. Which actually, Northwestern's been way more successful than Vandy in the last 30 years. GT thinks that Kelly and Day have some plays and key formations for the Oregon game. I, I would absolutely guess we're going to see some things we haven't seen yet next week. Oh, yeah, Dave. Dave thinks the offensive line is light years better than last year's. Totally agree. Um, they, uh, they're, they're playing just. A lot. I think a lot of it is uh, a lot of it is chip, but you know you got to give give credit to Fry for the development of these guys. Like each one of them has gotten better than last year. Uh, Donovan Jackson didn't look so great last year. This year so far, he's looked really really good. Simmons looks better. I mean, of course they're all a year bigger and stronger, but everybody's playing better. Fryer's playing better, and, and props to him. He's never going to be great. He's limited athletically. But you're not going to bull rush him. You know, there's a lot of things he does really well. Resident, uh, resident duck eye Billy McBride, Billy McBride thinks that October 12th is going to be a defensive showcase. We're not going to see a ton of offense then, huh? At least we can all be on the same page and root for Vanderbilt. Did Vandy just score? Oh my gosh, Vandy just scored. You got to be kidding me. That number two for Iowa was a mean person. Uh, who was wearing number two? Oh my gosh, touchdown Vandy, touchdown Vandy. <laughs> Colton says, what is ESPN going to do when uh, Big Bad Bama loses to Vandy? Worst program loss in 30 years, man. After that big win, oh my gosh. You know what they're going to do? They're going to say it was it was just a result of uh of that epic uh game of the decade they played last week. Nobody could have possibly come back off of that win and played a good game. They'll find some excuse. Dave said their defense is getting shredded. That Diego kid can play though. He's a baller. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it, buddy. I think I got an Eddie in every color. <laughs> GT doesn't like Kelly running ISO quarterback draw on fourth and one, and it wouldn't surprise me if they may have run that in this game and then throw a pop pass. Well, well, now you just, there's Duck fans in here. You just told them what we're going to do. Come on, GT. No, uh, 
Donovan Jackson got blown up on that play. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Chris says Chip has helped Fry save his job. Yeah, absolutely. How do I feel that Fry is back in for Conroy? I love it. I want Conroy. I talked to Will. Will's happy. Um, you know, Will, the way Will felt about Ohio State three weeks ago, uh, seems totally different. And that's what we want to hear. So that was excellent. Last night I was at the uh the Walsh Hoban game and big Sam Greer looked fantastic. Uh Walsh won the game, which it was an it was an awesome game. But uh you told him he's relaying the message. Steve Gu Guthrie got offered, buddy. Guthrie got his offer today. And he is thrilled about it. Yeah, buddy. Sonny was on a mission today. Not only did Sonny just look amazing, it looked like he was playing, like he was he was listening to the criticism, like he was out to out to show everybody. Like, didn't it just look like he had an extra chip on his shoulder? You don't usually see him like that. He's kind of like laid back personality wise, um, kind of stoic. You know what I mean? Like scary as hell and stoic. But he he played wild today. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, Carson Beck definitely shredded him in the second half, or shredded them in the second half. Ooh. Colton says, the rumors on Fry, I believe, are true. Great development and not such a good recruiter. Which would you like? Well, here's the thing. It depends, right? I mean, if you are not such a great recruiter, but you focus on Ohio, and you're a great offensive line developer, I think that's a perfect uh, recipe to have a great offensive line at Ohio State. But if you're not a great recruiter like Fry, and you also seem to be somewhat dismissive of some of our best offensive line prospects in Ohio, now you got a double whammy. You know what I mean? Like the fact that he had to be prodded and wait for Georgia and Texas uh, in Texas a and in any stadium, they're just doing great. How soft are we looking now, man? The Bucks look hard. They really do. The running backs look hard. The defensive line looks hard. The linebackers look hard. Everybody looks hard. Even the quarterback's hard. Quarterback will run you over. D-line will, oh, they look great. They look, Ty Leak is such a difference maker. Such a difference maker. Meek asked, uh, will Carnell play next week? So Carnell was listed as questionable coming into the game, which that was out of nowhere. So I, I've not heard at all what's wrong with Carnell as to why he was listed as questionable. So no idea, but if, definitely if he's healthy, he'll play. I mean, even if he's just not a, a little injured, he'll still play. Like that's that's a big one. Touchdown, Bama, and that'll cut the lead. Jeez, Rod, is your is your feed just that much ahead of mine, or am I not lived up? No, I'm lived up. Your feed's just that much ahead of mine. On the Ryan Williams reverse. Colton, do we look like the only elite team in the country? Haven't struggled as much as some of the other big dogs. So looking at Texas, they certainly weren't great against uh they weren't who who did they have last week? Was it Mississippi State or was that the week before? That was the week before. And Toledo beat Mississippi State by more than Texas beat them. What was the final of that uh, Indiana Northwestern game, Terry? Indiana comes out, does it again. Um, the spread was 14. I took the Hoosiers. I would have taken the Hoosiers minus. Uh, oh, they only won by seven. Come on, Hoosiers. But they won. They got the dub. What's up, Chris? Great game. Go, Bucks. Bucks 42 to 10. Putting the hammer on the Ducks next week. Let's get it. It's going to be a good one, guys. This week we'll do a, 
I'm doing one episode on uh, Sports Chat 503 with uh, with Ryan. Oh, what the hell's Ryan's last name? Ryan from uh, he's an Oregon guy. So I'm going to do his show one night next week. I'll let you know when that's going to be. It's going to be a live one. So I'll need you guys to back me up because last time they tried to jump on me out there. And uh, I'm sure I'll do another show with uh, with Max from Scoop Duck. So whole lot of uh, whole lot of ducks and bucks coverage today. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Respect the Ohio State fans. See you there. It'll be a great game. You all experience the noise of a small stadium. It's unbelievable. Good job, Jux. My Ducks will win by two touchdowns. Jeez. <laughs> That's offensive. Um, appreciate it, man. Appreciate appreciate the love. Appreciate you tuning in. And uh, I've, I've seen a lot of respect from the Duck fans, which is why I, I welcome them a lot here, because they are respectful, uh, much different than the USC fans, for instance who are all disrespectful. So I like the duck fans. I think it's going to be an awesome game in the beginning of, of potentially a couple uh, games this year and, and a budding new rivalry. You know what I mean? Rivals on the uh, rivals on the recruiting trail rivals in the conference. It's fun. It's all good stuff. And I definitely will be um, looking forward to uh, making it out to that stadium some year. It won't be this year, but some year it is really interesting how that that small stadium can create so much noise and i still haven't got an answer as to why it's shaped so oddly Autzen is just a strange shape <laughs> tell them ducks that ucla is the only team out west with usc <laughs> What you uh, duck fans? What'd you think of the uh, the uniforms that uh, Dan Lanning's wife created that they were wearing last night? I thought they were pretty sharp. Colton says, "Just have to say, love the show and love the move to menace. Keep it up and thank you, thank you, Colton. Appreciate you, buddy." Terry says, 41 to 14, 17 points." Is my uh, thing? There it is, Terry. My my screen over here on the iPad wasn't uh, updated. So I won the bet. Thanks. Duck Bill agrees. Ducks by 14. I think it'll be a really good one. All the sound is focused onto the field like an auditorium. Mika Walsh did not test. No, they were not messing with rock at all. Um. Rock had a bit of a, a hoe. I mean, he just didn't get involved a lot because, uh, no, they didn't want to test Rock Hill at all. Um, Feaster ran hard. That Walsh team was so, like, if you, wa you watched Hoban walk out and Walsh walk out, and it just looked like, okay, you know, I test like Hoban was just like grown men and uh, lines of scrimmage the entire game. Walsh played with so much heart. They just stonewalled him over and over and over. And uh, they end up winning. It was wild. I never would have expected it. Even though Walsh was 6-0 and into the game, I just I still thought that Hoban was a, a healthy favorite to win the game. I mean, they were. They were a 12.5-point favorite. Um, yes, we we have lines for uh, for high school football games here in Northeast Ohio. <laughs> uh, this is the truth. Here we go. Every time there's a... An upset starts, they uh, they come back, and they usually do, man. They're good at this. Yeah, that would just be a stupid move to uh, to throw it Rock Hill's way. Like, the number one corner in the country for a high school quarterback? Yeah, just go ahead and stay away from that guy. Give him the field. Feaster loves the Buckeyes. Um, I talked to him a little while back. I definitely think that uh, should they – pursue him properly like you would suspect they will and eventually he'll move to linebacker he's still running the ball but he's going to be a linebacker you can talk about like twitch like he's so like i think eli's really eli's fast and eli's quick but uh feaster is is even more so and feaster's a big dude I shot a video, Mika, of him rumbling down the sideline. I'll I'll play it on uh, tomorrow's show. 
good looking good looking prospect man for a kid that young too it's just crazy so all right guys so for the week's schedule we're going to be live monday through friday 9 30 a.m as usual um we've moved to the live format moving forward um every morning and uh and then next week i will keep you posted on when we're going to do the sports chat 503 show with ryan out at uh, oregon and then we are going to do uh another one with um my buddy uh max torres from scoop duck and i'll let you know when that guy is uh, when that show is going on as well so i'm gonna head out and check out the uh the rest of this bama game and then hopefully watch washington pull off not an upset but you know just just win the game against michigan Appreciate y'all so much. Thanks for joining me today. Sorry about the hic hiccups early on. And uh, I will talk to you guys later. All right. Jug on Bucks out.